Thanks, Mary. Um, so, as Mary said, my, my name is, is Mark Lynn and I work for Dublin City University. I'm speaking on behalf of, of some of my colleagues, uh, Louise, Laura and Lorraine, who essentially were the, the uh, lecturing staff that were behind this project, whereas I just came along and started to tell them all these fancy different bits and pieces they could do. So, um, in terms of gamification, we started off, I was obviously promoting it, reading it up in the literature, promoting it to these lectures, and they just didn't know whether it was, was it the big cure or was it much ado about nothing? Well, what, um, <clears throat> before we go into anything, I, any further, I think it's important because there's a lot of misconceptions about what gamification is. Um, so just putting up that, that definition there, which we, we explained to our staff, um, that it's about bringing in elements of games. It's about bringing in a quiz. It's about bringing in lessons and Moodle books and conditional activities and all these sorts of little bits and pieces. Simple things, and you don't have to gamify everything. You can gamify just one little bit, or indeed you can incrementally increase it as you go along. And the first reaction we had from staff was, no, that's not gamification. And, you know, I said, yeah, it is, because uh, I, I, I tell you exactly what it is. I've read up on it. They started getting confused with serious games, or they started getting confused with game-based learning. So a lot of it started off just educating them at the, at the very onset that about the value of gamification, but also what it is and what it isn't. Um, <clears throat> and I have tweeted out these slides so you can have them and. Um, Dyson spliced them, whatever way you like. The challenge that we looked at was um, research, liter uh, research literacy, to me. And it was a particular module that is key throughout the entire program, um, in this case, an undergraduate uh, psychology program. It's key throughout the, uh, from years one to four, but students didn't get it in first year. And if they didn't get it in first year, they were shafted as they went through in terms of second year, third year, and fourth year. So, as I said, the challenge is problems associated with research literacy, and in this particular instance, we're talking about the maths behind it, the quantitative analysis, the statistics, the stuff the students hated, right? Um, for, for me, the challenge level, sticking with the, game, um, the gaming terminology, the challenge levels were on three different stages, the staff CPD. So I told them, yes, you can gamify, no problem, and this is how it will help. I can show you all the literature to show it will improve engagement. But you need to use an assignment. You need to use a quiz. You need to use a lesson. And they say, ah, that sounds great. How do I do that? Right? And I'd look at their Moodle courses, and it was full of PowerPoints and PDFs. We won't even mention about the accessibility or lack thereof. So there was a big education process that we had to go through, a staff development bit. Um, they didn't know what they didn't know. That was essentially what it came down to. There was no objections from the staff. When you explained it to them, they, they saw the value, but they didn't know what they didn't know. The next bit then was the implementation. And very much like Orly in, in her presentation, we had to work with staff on the ground, identifying the fruits and the foods and everything else, and, and design the course and actually roll it out. And um, really for me, and it reminded me of, you may remember the ad in the 80s of the Hamlet cigar where the guy like does everything trying to organise it and then he sits back and has a smoke when it all falls to pieces afterwards. That was the, the sort of situation where I found myself in halfway through the module and I'll explain that now in a second. And then we had the evaluations. Did it work? It looked cool. If I was looking at it from a technical point of view, the co and indeed the course design point of view, the course looked so much better after we finished, but did it work? So there are the three stages or the three levels that we had to go through with it. And here are our findings. In no particular order, right? But we did have positive outcomes. We did see improved retention within it, right? But I'll go, to, go through them one by one. <clears throat> okay, so in each, all the slides are, are quite similar layout. The main learning is on this side, and then just a little bit more detail on, on the left-hand side, right? But the students absolutely responded really well to having the quizzes, to having videos in advance of the sessions, right? That whole flipping the classroom side of things, we didn't fully implement, but we did give them as much information in as many formats as we could, and they had it as they liked it. That was pretty much the way it worked out. Um, they, they really liked the progress bar, 
that we had um, to, to tell them where they were within each stage, but they didn't want a progress bar with 50 things on it. They wanted several different progress bars where it's broken down into small identifiable chunks, manageable chunks that, that they loved it. They definitely preferred the e-learning activities and definitely preferred the videos and the introductory topics and the lessons as opposed to a PDF that was put up on, on the site. Um, and the gamified activities where we built scenarios to explain it, the real life application to this stuff, the students could resonate with that and it, and, and it helped them um, embrace the subject that little bit more. So key learning for us, more tools, Moodle is great. That was, that was pretty much what it was. And we actually started to set up a little bit of course envy with some of our colleagues where we said, oh, you know, our students are doing X, Y, and Z in this module, you should give it a go. The next one was the, the control. And as I said, students loved it because it was the as, as you like it, but where they had all of the material available that they could do at their pace in their place. And that was overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly the, the response from students was this was a good thing. Right? Now it's obvious to everybody here in this room, but when we had all of the students in the class replying back to the survey saying, Moodle is good, you should use it more often. The, the lecturers start to, to listen. But the lecturers got a little bit uncomfortable, right? Where we were giving control over to the students. And they said, no, 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 they need to learn it this way, because this is the way I learned it, and I need to know exactly what. No, put up all your stuff, give them it, allow them the choice and the direction as to where they can go, because it helps them engage with the material. So there was a little bit of, I won't say, education with the lectures, but just a little bit of letting go that some of them weren't, weren't too comfortable with. Um, the other one is, is motivation, and anybody that's into psychology, and I, I, I must confess I'm not, I just have a, 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 a little interest more so than, than deep knowledge. But the gamification elements weren't enough by themselves to generate interest. So what we had to do, and, and as I say here on the slides, the, the ones that were intrinsically motivated actually embraced it so much more and was brilliant. But what we're going to do, and actually we're doing uh, the week after next, is we're trying to uh, come up with uh, a way to profile the students at the very start to see if we can identify and tap into the intrinsic motivations by using the likes of gamification. And because we can personalize the learning through it, we feel we, we would stand a, a good chance at it. <coughs> Group work. This was a huge revelation for us, right? Now, um, <coughs> students hated it. First year, right? They came in typically. Our typical staff, uh, our typical participants came in straight from the leaving cert, so A level equivalent, and hadn't really done group work before. And now all of a sudden, you're telling them 25% of their score or 50% of their score is relying on somebody else. They absolutely hated it. But in our course and our learning outcomes, we had your students by the end of this will be able to work in group work. So actually what we found was, and it was really stressing out the students, right? But what we found was we needed to actually change the way we taught and actually introduce group work activity at a much earlier level, but in a structured, safe level to go through. And uh, again, that, is, that has worked. Uh, uh, we've redeveloped it for, for this year. This, this work started a year and a half ago now at this stage, but uh, redeveloped it. And we're getting much more positive results when we can structure in the group work an awful lot more. Now, this was the disappointing thing for the lecture. And basically, just to explain what we did, where, uh, when it gets really tough in around week five, we surveyed the students and we were saying, what's your attitude towards statistics and a whole lot of other uh, different questions that we asked them. And then we asked them at the end of week 12 and we were sort of ready to hear this. We all love statistics now and we didn't actually hear it, right? So that was, that was quite disappointing for us. But again, what we need to do is we need to, uh, like group work really impacted on the, the, uh, their whole attitude towards the, the subject. Um, but we need to learn from that, and actually in this case, we're going to take the attitudes, the, the same survey we're going to take at week one 
and then week five, and then week uh, week 12, and so on, and see if there's a change. But as I say, there are, the grades have improved, the retention has improved, and actually very significantly, the lead lecturer got one of the highest uh, nominations for a teaching and learning award from our class. So uh, there was other knock-on effects like that, where she, I think she got 14 separate nominations out of a class of 32. So um, it, there was positive things, even though we didn't get the attitude change. In terms of the next step, so right now, this semester, we've removed group work, right? We've removed group work from that element of it. We were actually redesigning it uh, or integrating it outside the gamified elements, but from the gamified elements, we've, we've removed it. Um, and we're redesigning the group tasks ac accordingly. And we're also looking at the timetabling options because the daily students, we, we, we actually got a, a big insight into the students. Most of them were commuting like over 90 minutes each way. So asking them to do group work when they have to catch a bus and they're on the bus for an hour and a half, you know, just the practical things like this, that opened our eyes and opened our lecturer's eyes as to why uh, this sort of approach needs to be redefined. And also, why putting the content online in a blended learning became more attractive to the students. 90 minutes each way, they could be actually learning their stuff on the buses. Um, so we are splitting a, a year-long module into two, and actually we're having that, that foundation work put at, at, at the start. But it's very much, even despite the last slide where the attitudes didn't change towards statistics, it's very much seen as a successful project. And I'll explain why. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at this from, from two points of view, right? Uh, so I'll be the icon on the, on the left, I'm the, the, the head of teaching and learning, the people wanting to uh, encourage blended learning, absolutely great success. So Louise has it integrated in, into her module, Louise's colleagues now want to integrate it into the module and the students are now asking for other bits and pieces. And the learning that Louise and her colleagues had through the various different workshops that we'd, we'd run. You can't un, unlearn that. You can't forget that. So even though we were teaching it for NS126, she used it in NS405, she used it in NS307, or whatever the other modules were. So it was a real worthwhile investment for, for us, for our team. Um, from her point of view, she got an insight as to um, how the student works Ha, the, the, the challenges facing students and, and to redesign her module accordingly. But I would only give it a four out of five, and the reason why I would do that is because it didn't change the attitudes, right? It didn't, it wasn't a panacea, it wasn't the overall cure. But if I go back to the, 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 um, the Shakespearean uh, uh, analogy, and if I compare it with Julius Caesar, where you forget the ladders from where, or just forget the steps from where you did uh, arise, you can see, it's a tall to get that one in there, right? What happened with, with Lorraine was, uh, Lorraine and, and with Laura, they'd forgotten how basic their course was beforehand and how they've actually incorporated technology. They'd forgotten what they didn't know, okay? So for me, gamification was a success, is a success. It does work, but I would say if you are implementing it in your own organization or getting your staff to implement it, I would say take it in baby steps. Don't try change it completely overnight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. And any questions? Put your hands up and we'll get the microphones to you. One there first. Hi, that was great. Um, I'm really interested in the link you uh, brought up with retention, because so often we put these new um, pedagogies and new things in place, uh, but you don't, uh, I'm, I'm speaking broadly now, but you see the engaged students engage more, but the not engaged students don't really come along any further. What do you think it is about this approach that gets that retention switch going? So, it, there was a, oh yeah, sorry. There was a multitude of things that actually happened, but when students, so, so this was a class of 32 students, um, but I'm sure the dynamic would, would apply in, in so many more situations. But when it started off in a good place, when it started off with students' attitudes where 
quite happy about it and I understand it. And it, the classes became a discussion style thing as opposed to a lecture. Straight away, the dynamic changed where um, if you had anybody that was like sitting on the fence, they were more swayed towards the positive feelings towards it. Um, so that had a big thing. When students are coming in, particularly with this subject, and they know from their predecessors that, oh, it's very matzy. And, it, it, and there was a high failure rate in it. They immediately come in with these preconceptions. So if we can address that by giving them content in advance, by allowing them take it step by step, by allowing them the freedom to fail, um, and by that I mean do a quiz time and time and time and time and time again, and we could give them structured feedback, that automatically had a very positive effect for us. Great stuff. Cool. Thanks, folks. Thank you very much. You've obviously explained it so well that we only needed one question. Thank you. Okay. Um, so.